Hi, and welcome to another Light Reading Telecom Innovator video, where we are introducing you to some of the people and companies that are moving the global communications industry forward. We have a really interesting company to talk about today. My name is Phil Harvey. I'm an editor here at Light Reading, and I'm joined on this interview today by uh, Prague Nike, the CEO of Sankhya Labs. Hi, Prague. How are you? Good, Phil. Uh, thanks, and appreciate your time. Uh, pleasure talking to you. Yeah. First of all, I guess the, the, the best place to start, especially for uh, you know the U.S. and North American market, is to help us get to know Sankhya Labs a little bit. Um, what, what's the company's uh, story and, and, and what does the company do? So we founded in 2007, uh, the co-founders, the three of us, and we have uh, you know years of experience in building uh, uh, chipsets for various markets. So we started Sankhya in 2007 to build a technology called Software Defined Radios. So until then, Software Defined Radios were, uh, you know, in the realm of uh, the military domain, right? So we, mm -hmm. given our background, we decided to take this technology to the consumer domain, right? And we are one of the first uh, first folks on earth to actually go build a, a, you know, ready to deploy a commercialized Software Defined Radio. So Software Defined Radio is a precursor to, you know, all the software-defined radio access networks that's being talked about right now, uh, uh, you know, in the, in the context of open RAN and in the context of uh, virtual RAN. So that's our claim to yeah. fame. No, it's a great. Um, uh, yeah, you're right. It, it, it is a topic. Software-defined radios have come up quite a bit um, as right. we're talking right. about the evolution right. of the uh, 5G ecosystem and how yeah. that yeah. network's evolving. Um, so in this in this realm of software-defined radios. Um, where did where does uh, where does Sankhya Labs fit in? So, what were your uh, technical strengths as you're sort of building the company? Where uh, how how did that kind of launch you into this market? Yeah, so a little I'll take a step back. So, when we started off uh, talking about software defined radios, uh, especially twelve years ago, uh, you know, there was a lot of skepticism in in the industry, right? Uh, mostly because DSP based programmable architectures have uh, for you know for performing a fixed function modem or a radio access network was was considered uh, you know expensive and uh, way out, way out of the realm of consumer domains and a lot of the techniques that are used in 5G are also developed in the 60s they couldn't earlier be implemented largely because you didn't have enough compute power to do that so now that there's enough compute power uh, I'll talk we'll talk about it as we go along. Uh, it, it's very, you know, uh, a programmable software architecture is, is the way, way forward for, uh, you know, for any uh, any architecture. So uh, one of the, you know, kind of areas that uh, uh, that you mentioned earlier that you're, you're excited about is the Open RAN uh, market. So l let me get your kind of overall thoughts on Open RAN as a technology and how this fits into the overall market. So uh, uh, open, we've been talking about openness, uh, not just open RAN for quite some time now. In fact, there is, uh, you know, three axes that I look at from a radio access network perspective that are very important for uh, uh, for any network operator. Uh, one is, uh, you know, uh, openness that basically you go away from proprietary closed architectures to, uh, you know, to more programmable open, uh, eventually a Linux style hardware architecture. Uh, that's one of the, one of our goals. The second one is uh, observability or extreme observability. So, Today, uh, the networks are not observable at a, at a lower level. Uh, so because of that, a whole lot of network automation functions can't be performed in real time. And you don't get basically uh, the maximum, the best out of your network. And third one, third most important uh, leg is basically uh, what I call uh, dynamism. Uh, so the radio environment, if you look at, is basically a very dynamic entity. But our the architectures, our deployment and our provisioning uh, in the last 15 years or until up, up until now has always been static, which is you deploy, you're deploying for the worst case scenario. So these three uh, legs are what, what we feel is important. Uh, Open RAN is addressing the first step, first two ones, basically uh, the, the openness part and also the observability part. So eventually future uh, versions of Open RAN and the stuff that we're doing, uh, we'll talk about, we'll also bring in the third leg, that's the you know, uh, that's the dynamism of the network itself. And okay. and uh, we call it provision on, on as you go, right? Today, you under, uh, you're either under provision or over provision, right? So you, you're not right provisioning uh, you know, the radio access. 
Openness, observability, that's already been addressed by the open RAN market um, to date. Um, the, but the dynamic nature uh, of the network, being able to be a lot more flexible in terms of provisioning resources is where you see there being an opening. Um, let's talk about what Sankhya offers in, in this space or what you're, what you're building in, in the uh, open RAN market. Sure. Uh, so we've, uh, we are in the third generation of our SDR chipsets. The first two generations are in production, but we, we actually uh, build them for, for consumer domain. So uh, now we're looking at the telecom infra domain. So we, we bring in a lot of expertise uh, for, from a programmability and a flexibility perspective. And just to give you a, a you know feeling for how complex the uh, implementation of a RAN is, you got to know a lot about VLSI technologies, uh, building chipsets and all of that. That's the horizontal skill. You got to know the domain. That's uh, signal processing, uh, radio access networks, and uh, you know a bit of AI and ML part there. And if these two are not enough, on the third part, you got also the cloud technologies coming in, right? So that's that's right. completely a software word. Open RAN gives us that ability uh, now to bring in all these new innovations I talked about, uh, which was not pro- possible earlier. It gives you a a framework it gives you a plumbing that allows you to do this so we are building uh, a open we call this the open du framework uh, that's the, the that's the gut of the uh, uh, radio access network that actually will help you uh, lower uh, lower your uh, t- uh, cost of operations uh, it will help you get better capacity and also the lowest uh, cost per gigabit uh, for an operator so that's that's what we are focusing on we are also building uh, radio units uh, that go on top of the tower, uh, uh, specifically designed for the ORAN architecture. So our uh, RU uh, products are slated for early next year. Uh, the DU uh, is a bit of a longer term project, but uh, we we are in advanced stages of, uh, of building a software framework. In fact, we are propounding a whole new concept of building radio access networks uh, based on a concept called domain specific architectures that's getting very prevalent in, you know, in the uh, in the VLSI industry right now. Okay, so a lot to kind of unpack there, but I mean, you you're, you are building um, radio units for Open RAN, and you're saying these are going to be on the market um, sometime next year in 2021. Next, first that, quarter right? of next year. Yeah, that's first quarter of next year. Okay, and those will be you know software defined radios, and like you said, may, um, meant to address right. uh, the the basic level of connectivity, but also this added element of you know the cloud and hyperscalability as well. Correct. So can you give me a little bit more detail on just like what you mean with when you're talking about hyperscalability when it comes to a software defined radio in use of a, um, you know, a, a cellular network or a 5G network? Yeah. How does that all sort of work together and what what advantage do you offer the market there? So if you look at uh, current uh, RAN solutions, they're in two buckets. One is uh, directed towards the VRAN uh, market, which is basically the, the two large uh, players there, the new entrants, and then there are these traditional uh, players that that have these chipsets for the cell site architecture. So now uh, uh, you you have different provisioning uh, for a cell site deployment, and a very different one for a data center. In a data center architecture, you you have to be able to scale uh, scale your compute uh, based on the load. So we call this elasticity. So our architecture is elastic in the sense that it can go down, scale down to uh, to a cell site deployment where you probably need lesser compute, you would be serving fewer sectors or fewer, uh, you know, fewer towers. Whereas on the uh, on the data center side, you would have a slew of, or, uh, or depending on what capacity you want to provision, you could have hundreds of sectors to be supported. So that's what I mean by hyperscalability, ability to go scale out and scale down uh, in a, with a single architecture. So today, this is ser- served by two different sets of vendors. Uh, and we we are, we are, we are planning to change that having a single architecture that goes up and down. Um, are, is uh, Sankhya Labs talking to five G operators now? And how is your technology making its way to market? Yes, we are uh, deeply in talks with uh, with a couple of US operators. In fact, one Greenfield US operator. Uh, we we have also spoken to a lot of operators in uh, in Europe. Okay, so they're they're excited by the idea. I mean, I they're know they're excited. familiar. They're intrigued. Yeah, especially they're intrigued by our uh, Open Duo platform, uh, yeah. which uh, uh, you know the as uh, the we have a lot of material on it uh, that's come, going to come up uh, that would probably change the way networks are uh, potentially deployed. 
Okay. Wow. That's interesting. Um, so let's, uh, you know, kind of forecasting ahead a little bit because, you know, what is your view of the market, you know, beyond 5G and where, and where, where do you see your, uh, your company fitting in? We are looking at the inside out view where we're looking at it from the perspective of the network. So to, to me personally, and to, uh, to us at Sankhya, 60 is, uh, if 5G was about virtualization of the uh, anti-segregation of the, of the infrastructure, 60 would be the uh, disaggregation and the virtualization of the handset itself. Uh, and, oh, okay. and the other definition of 60 we see is it's, it's 5G plus ML, uh, machine learning and AI you know, at, learning, at yeah. the edge would be 60. Uh, virtualization okay, of yeah, the that... uh, modem, uh, when we say virtualization, I speak uh, from Sankhya's perspective, it's always the RAN and, and the modems on the uh, consumer device. Right, yeah. So the other view of 60 that we have is basically, you know, the, the 3GPP itself can get into the cloud, right? So if you look at it, uh, the virtualization that we are speaking about today are virtualization of the implementation. We are also talking about what's called the virtualization of the interface so that, you know, the network uh, designs a new waveform. So eventually after 6G, if, if you get it right, you don't have to have a 7G. The network itself will decide to drop to 4G or it can design an 8G on its own uh, through a, you know, through a framework uh, then that's get, that gets defined uh, by, by this body. In the case of uh, the radio access network and wireless network, we didn't follow, we, didn't, we did not follow that approach. And that has so far resulted in a very strong coupling between the hardware and the standards. So if we decouple that, uh, and virtualize the interface, then any device that enters a network can actually be programmed by the network based on a whole bunch of capabilities that it has and based on a cost function that the, uh, that the network administrator and the user decide to uh, negotiate on or w w want to optimize on. Wow, that's a lot. So <laughs> let me, <laughs> let me, let me, let me get that in my head around that. So that become that that basically frees us up to then you know instead of being tied everything tethered to a phone, um, that really would would unlock an, a true Internet of Things because then you could simply um, ask the network for connectivity and for capability when exactly. whenever you needed to, as long as your device had the right software and capabilities inside of it. Yeah. So the device doesn't have the right software. It has a, it has in our parlance a virtual machine. The software right. gets downloaded from the network. The network okay. decides, uh, and that that makes it more secure. Also, by the way, uh, that's a second order benefit of that, uh, because you know there's a whole lot of security that can build can be built in at the low uh, at the lowest physical layer uh, that makes your whole network more secure. These are basically bringing in cognition into the network. So today's networks are not cognitive; these are self-aware right. uh, cognitive networks. Yeah, and and I, that was going to answer my next question, which I was going to uh, kind of end with talking about AI. And this sounds like this is where artificial intelligence also comes into play. Um, yeah. Is that how you see this sort of uh, the network making these decisions and deciding, you know, yes. kind of uh, how to enable devices? Absolutely, the network senses the environment, adapts to the environment based on a bunch of policies or cost functions that the network administrator decides to uh, you know, uh, optimize on. So that's where the network would be eventually. So this is the post 5G world, right? Or 60, yeah. Well, um, that, that's a good, uh, th this is a really good place to leave it. So I think people are probably sufficiently curious about your company and what you're building and 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 uh, and, and perhaps a new white paper that you put out. Um, what's, a, what's a good place for people to find all of that information? Uh, it's going live on our uh, website. So our website has got a lot of information about, uh, about what we just spoke uh, on, okay. on the various products and other the technologies that we are working on. Excellent. And there'll be descriptions in this video's uh, uh, comment section and, 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 uh, and surrounding materials uh, when people see this. So uh, thanks so much for, uh, for making the time. Uh, Parag Naik, uh, CEO of Sankhya Labs, uh, really, really do appreciate your time today. Thank you, Phil. Pleasure talking to you. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. All right. Take care.